Hello, seventh graders. This is Miss White, and today we're doing lesson eight the difference between theoretical probabilities and estimated probabilities. Let's go ahead and flip over to the next page. All right, and so in this activity that we're going to do right now, let's, let's think about what is special about a coin. In most cases, a coin has two different sides a head side and a tail side, and the sample space for tossing a coin is the heads and tails. If each outcome has an equal chance of occurring when the coin is tossed, then the probability of getting heads is one half or five tenths. And there's also the probability of getting 0 0.5. Note that the sum of these two probabilities are one. No matter what, the coin is going to land on a side. The probabilities formed using the sample space and what we know about coins are called theoretical probabilities. Using observed relative frequencies is another method to estimate the probabilities of heads or tails. A relative frequency is the proportion derived from the number of the observed outcomes of an event divided by the total number of outcomes. Recall from an earlier lesson that a relative frequency can be expressed as a fraction, a decimal, or a percent. So is the estimate of a probability from this method close to a theoretical probability? Um, let's look at A to investigate how relative frequencies can be used to estimate probabilities. So A says Beth started to complete the following table as a way to investigate the relative frequencies. For each outcome, the number of tosses increased. The number of heads or tails observed so far depends on the outcome of the current toss. Complete the table for the 10 tosses recorded in the previous table. So. Beth already has filled out three tosses, and we're going to fill out the rest. I know you cannot see it, but I actually have a penny, if you can hear that. And I am going to land it on my iPad, and I'll let you guys know what the outcome is. All right, here we go. Okay, and the outcome is heads. So now our total number of heads so far is going to be Now, the relative frequency of heads so far to the nearest hundredth. Well, we have landed heads three times out of how many times we've tossed, and that's going to be four. And three divided by four is going to give us 75 hundredths. Now, the total number of tails so far, well, that's still going to be one. So now we have one fourth, and that is going to give us 25 hundredths. All right, let's flip for five. All right, we got tails this time. So the total number of heads so far is still going to be three. So our fraction is going to be three out of five. And three out of five is going to give us six tenths. Now the tumber, number of tails so far, tumber, the number of tails so far is going to be two. And so now we have two out of five, and that's gonna give us four tenths. All right, let's go ahead and flip again. Oops, I can't pick it up now. <laughs> and it's messing up the document. All right, and we get heads. So number of heads so far is four, and we're gonna have four sixths. If we simplify this, we're gonna get two thirds, and two thirds is going to be equivalent to 0 0.66 repeating. Now the number of tails so far is still going to be two. So we're gonna have two divided by six, and when we simplify that, we're gonna get one third, and so the equivalence is going to be 0 0.33 repeating. Okay, let's go for our next coin toss. And we get tails. 
So our heads is going to still say the same. We're going to have 4 out of 7. Go ahead in your calculator and type 4 divided by 7. We're going to approximately get 0 0.75. And then the total of tails so far is going to be 3. So we're going to have 3 out of 7. Go ahead with your calculator and calculate near to the nearest hundredth. And that's going to give us about 0 0.43. All right, let me pick up the coin again. And we are gonna get heads. Wow, this is kind of crazy <laughs> how it's been every other time. So the number we have now is five, and now we're gonna have five eighths. Go ahead with your calculator and calculate. All right, and we should get 0 0.63. And the number of tails is still going to be three. And so we have three eighths. Go ahead and calculate this with your calculator. And that's going to give us 0 0.38. Okay. Getting close to finishing this. And we get tails. Okay. So we get tails. That means our heads are going to stay the same. So we have 5 over 9. Go ahead with your calculator and calculate 5 divided by 9. All right. And that's going to give us 5, or sorry, 0 0.5. Six and really, it's even five repeating. Whichever one you would like to do, it does not matter to me. So now we're gonna have four out of nine as tails. Oops, I wrote that in the wrong place. Sorry, we have four tails and four out of nine. Go ahead with your calculator and calculate that, and that's gonna give us 0 0.44. All right, last time, maybe we can switch it up by getting a tails. Here we go. And we did get a tails, finally, okay. <laughs> Instead of going every other. So again, our total number of heads so far is going to be five. And so we have five divided by five. And that's going to give us one half, which can be written as 0 0.5. And then our number of tails is also going to be five. So again, we're gonna have five out of 10, which we know is one half that can be written in decimal form as 0 0.5. All right, B, what is the sum of the relative frequency of heads and the relative frequency of tails for each row on the table? Well, let's only look maybe at three different rows. We can look at row one, we can look at row, hmm, let's look at row five, and finally our 10. Okay, so let's go ahead and add these relative frequencies up. For row one, the relative frequency for heads is one, and the relative frequency for tails is zero. So one plus zero equals one, okay? For toss five, the relative frequency of heads is six tenths plus the relative frequency of tails, which is four tenths. So when we add those together, we still get one. And then again, for toss 10, we're gonna have five tenths plus five tenths, and that still gives us one. All right, let's move on to C. So here we want to use Beth's results to display using this graph. And we're gonna use the values from the relative frequency of heads from our past table. So here it's already graphed our three tosses. And so now we're gonna start graphing our own tosses. So for our relative frequency, we have 75 hundredths. And so now for our fourth toss, we're going to put our dot there and connect our line. All right, and then for our fifth toss, we have six tenths as our relative frequency. So we're gonna go plot at 0.6 and then we're gonna connect our line. All right, then for our six toss, we got a relative frequency of 66 hundredths. So we're gonna try our best here to plot this. It's almost just gonna be just a little bit above the middle here. 
and connect our line, okay? For our seventh toss, we got 57 hundredths. So we're gonna go ahead and try to, again, plot the best we can. It's just gonna be a little bit over halfway and then connect our blue line. For our eighth toss, we got 63 hundredths. So that's just gonna be a little bit above that line now. For ninth toss, we got 56 hundredths. So we can go ahead and plot that. That's almost gonna be right here in the middle. And then for our 10th toss, we got one half. And so we can go ahead and connect our dots here. And I'm gonna make my red dots show a little bit better. And so here is our graph that helps us look at our relative frequency. All right, and that concludes our lesson for today. See you in class.